Okay, we uh, had arrived at uh, something which, oh, here we go, our plasma oscillation equations here, and uh, we want to do something about them. And really, we're only interested in small departures from equilibrium. And so the big, big important thing for all of plasma physics, and in many problems, but certainly in plasma physics, particularly to treat waves, is let's linearize. And what do we mean by linearize? And uh, we're going to, through, throughout chapter uh, 4 of Chen here, dealing with these oscillations, we're going to deal quite a little bit with linearization. So we'll try to be somewhat careful, and please ask questions if you have a little trouble understanding what we're doing here, because this is something that uh, you have to be able to do in your sleep when you're a plasma physicist, you see, uh, because it's so, so crucial that you do it all the time. Uh, doesn't mean you always get the right answer, but it's always the first thing you do. So, uh, for the linearization procedure. What we basically want to say with the linearization procedure is that the electron density is, in fact, some equilibrium electron density, n naught sub e. But then there's some perturbation about that, okay, n e tilde. And in some sense, if I took an average of n e tilde over some length or some time or something like that, that goes to zero. So the idea is I've got more or less an infinite homogeneous electron uh, density, but, you know, there's just these little wiggles here and there. And I put all the wiggles under a little wiggle sign. Some people make it n naught for the equilibrium and n sub 1 e for the perturbed quantity. So lowest order, zeroth order, and first order, okay, in some smallness parameter. The smallness parameter is the ratio of the fluctuating or varying part of the density to the equilibrium part. I will, however, almost always just make it n naught plus n tilde. The naught means the equilibrium value. The tilde means whatever's going to be varying in space or time or whatever's relevant. Okay. Now, the problem is density is perfectly easy. We can see how to do that. But notice there's a whole bunch of other quantities here that we have to also linearize, right? So we have to let them have their equilibrium values plus their perturbation values. So we can imagine that VEX, oops, not vector, is equal to some equilibrium plus some fluctuating part. And I won't bother with the subscript uh, X here. And we can imagine that E is equal to uh, E naught plus E tilde, and finally that the potential is equal to phi naught plus phi tilde. And all of these, okay, are the equilibrium, and all of these are the small perturbation or change away from that equilibrium. We're just assuming it's small. If we don't assume it's small, we'd have to do a nonlinear analysis. Now, we've allowed an awful lot of generality here. An equilibrium density, an equilibrium flow, an equilibrium electric field, and an equilibrium potential. But really, you know, it's much simpler just for a quasi-neutral equilibrium to neglect a bunch of these things. So a kind of specialization for the particular problem we're interested in for our problem. It's an infinite homogeneous medium, so do I need an n naught? Yeah, I better have n naught e equal to n naught i for quasi-neutral equilibrium. How about a flow velocity, v naught? Well, I don't need it, right? So let's set it equal to zero. That's just an assumption. I could take it to be there. Now, if I take that there's no flow velocity in equilibrium, then if I go back to uh, this equation and imagine looking only at the equilibrium, you can easily convince yourself that I should have no electric field, and phi has to be a constant as well. 
because basically if I'm going to have a, a flow velocity, I'd have to have this flow dot dvdx. So in fact, the equilibrium should not only have no flow, but it actually should have E naught equal to zero. Now, the final one, the potential, is then in order to be consistent with the electric field, uh, which is, you know, minus d phi dx, the, the potential would have to be a constant. And what do I choose that constant to be? How about zero? No reason I can't. So that's just, again, an assumption. No big deal. So, uh, well. so the net result is that the I've got the density, okay, is then going to be equal to all of this. Well, so, so maybe I, I just write those down. So the basic idea is while I put them down here, I'm going to eliminate the velocity, the electric field, and the potential in equilibrium. So for our perturbation scheme, um, so... So for small perturbations, what we're going to say is N sub E is going to go to N naught plus N tilde. Uh, v, I'm sorry, V E X is going to go to equilibrium flow, which we said we won't bother with and then we'll have a V tilde, so it's only a perturbation from the equilibrium of nothing. The electric field is likewise going to be just a perturbation, and the potential is likewise going to be just the perturbation. There's a constant, but we won't worry about the constant. So with all of these simplifications, now we can go back and look at our various equations here. And so let's first take our, our density conservation equation. So what I need to do is substitute these ansatzes or proposals of small perturbations away from the equilibrium into the density equation. How do I do that? Well, just directly substitute in. I get d by dt of Ne becomes n naught plus n tilde. Uh, so that took care of the dn dt. Then I have my divergence of nv term, which becomes then d by dx. And now I've got two terms. The ne becomes an n naught plus n tilde. And the vex becomes a v tilde. And this is equal to zero. Okay, now let's look at this equation a moment. What's the partial with respect to T of N naught? Zero, because, yeah, because N naught is supposed to be infinite, homogeneous, constant, and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, it better stay that way, and, and, and it is. What about this term? Well, D by DX, the N naught is homogeneous, so I can actually bring the N naught outside. But first, let me observe that this term times that one is a small perturbation times a small perturbation. And that is then a nonlinear term, right? So this is a nonlinear term. And what do we do with nonlinear terms in a perturbation, uh, in a small linearization? We go big fat x, get rid of them, right? So this equation, oh, and then once I've gotten rid of that, uh, so I should say nonlinear comma neglect. Uh, the idea, of course, is that we're only interested in first-order perturbations, and this nonlinear term would be very small, be second order in those perturbations. And if I got a perturbation that's one part in ten to the three, then this part, this term would contribute something like one part in ten to the sixth. You know, I'm not really interested in that kind of thing. So the net result of this is that my linearized for small perturbations about the equilibrium density conservation equation just becomes partial of n tilde with respect to t plus n naught dv tilde by dx is equal to zero. So 
Sorry? Ah, oh, I'm missing down too far. Sorry, yeah, right. <laughs> I'm trying to keep my equations up at the top here, right? So my density conservation, dn dt plus n naught dv v tilde by dx. Okay, so now uh, we next want to perform the same operation on the momentum balance equation. And here's our momentum balance equation. Um, so maybe we better take a new sheet so we won't run off the bottom too rapidly. So uh, we'd like to do the, the same thing. Okay, so here's... momentum balance. And I should say, of course, this is going to be the perturbed one. This pen's not doing too well, so let's try another one. Um, so let's just start sticking them in. So we've got electron mass, N. Okay, so we've got to have n naught plus n tilde. Then we have partial of v tilde with respect to t. Plus, and now the velocity only had the e, the perturbation. Remember, there wasn't any velocity in equilibrium. So that becomes v tilde dv tilde by dx. And this will then be equal to e times n naught plus n tilde, and then d phi tilde by dx. And then we have minus gamma te. And te was a constant, which we're many times going to neglect, of course, but anyway. Uh, and this becomes dn tilde by dx. Now here we get away with a little better throwing a few things away. V tilde times V tilde. There's a second order term. So that's nonlinear, right? So nonlinear. Likewise, that N tilde times the DV tilde by DT is nonlinear. So that means we'll get to neglect that one. Uh, finally, the N tilde D phi tilde by DX, that would be nonlinear. So we'll neglect that one. And that looks like about all we can get away with. Um, so the net result of the momentum balance equation is that we get m sub e. Um, try one more black pen here. Oh, good point. Why do I have an n tilde there? Well, how about I put in plus n naught? But n, it's uniform, infinite, and homogeneous. Okay, so that means that n naught is constant in x, and so the operation of the derivative on it will actually cause it to vanish. So it's it's the derivative causing it to vanish, not that I'm neglecting it. Let's put it that way. It just doesn't contribute. Okay, so we come back and then uh, start collecting terms here, and all we get is dv tilde by dt is then equal to uh, n naught e d phi tilde by dx and then minus gamma te dn tilde by dx. Now a little check we can make on our equations here is that in fact we better only have first order quantities in here. Every term should have one first order quantity to be linearized. There's a tilde, there's a tilde, there's a tilde. There's no two in any one term. So we survived that simple test. Okay, our final equation is Poisson's equation. And I'm going to now set this row free equals zero. We won't really need that, turns out. So, uh, so let me uh, just kind of swakle this equation. And our final equation then is Poisson's equation, which I'll write here as minus d squared phi tilde by dx squared um, is equal to e over epsilon naught. Now, the ion density was just equal to its equilibrium value. The electron density, on the other hand, had 
an equilibrium value, but it also had a perturbed value in tilde. Okay? Um, and then I left off uh, row free at this point. Okay, so, but by quasi neutrality, okay, in equilibrium. Ah, yes. All right, now we can get rid of the, yeah, getting off the bottom here. So by quasi neutrality, we can now eliminate the sum of those two terms. Then the minus sign goes away. And we finally end up with an equation just d squared phi by dx squared is equal to e over epsilon naught times n tilde. So with this, then we have the three equations we sort of wanted to have. I can just find the other one. Ah, here we go. Um, namely, we wanted the the density conservation equation, just this equation, momentum conservation equation, perturbed momentum conservation, and Poisson's equation. Yes? Ah, uh, oops, sorry. Uh, I should leave myself a tilde there. Yeah, the question is why don't I make this a, a why isn't that second order? Um, implicitly in this, all derivatives are of order unity. So the idea is that I can take as many derivatives as I want, and the ma it's only the magnitude of the quantities in question uh, that I care about, not uh, spatial or time derivatives. Later, many times when plasma physics, you like to deal with certain spatial scale lengths and certain time scale lengths. And then you do say that higher order derivatives will scale as frequencies or k's or something, and you may have small k and large k, and you may make an approximation. But for the linearization process per se, linearization, it's only the magnitude of the quantities we have to care about. Yeah. It's a good point to keep in mind. Um, and one of the reasons why I'm doing this the way I am is because I want to separate the processes of linearization and taking the wave e to the i k dot x where you do some other things. So first we're doing this linearization of the, of the things. Okay. So I have these three equations. Now often when you're, uh, when you're given equations like this in a slightly different context, namely uh, in the context of, um, say, mechanics or something, what you do is you look and you say, well, gosh, I've got V tilde here, and I've got its time derivative here. So if I would just take the time derivative of this equation, uh, I would end up with dV tilde by dt, and then I could substitute this in there. And then it turns out uh, I'll get a d by dx, and I'll be able to you know, combine all the equations. So let's go through that linearization procedure, or, or that, um, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, collection procedure, collection of equations into one equation. And so what we start out with is we have our density conservation equation, dn dt, uh, dn tilde by dt, plus n naught dv tilde by dx is equal to zero. And we take the time derivative of that equation, and what we get is d squared n tilde by dt squared plus n naught d by dx, and now d by dx and d by dt uh, commute, so I will just make this then dv tilde by dt, and that's equal to zero. But from my momentum balance equation, equation here at the bottom of the page, uh, my dn dv dt I can just divide through by me any in this equation, and what I'll get, the n noughts cancel, and so I'll get e over m sub e 
um, uh, d phi tilde by dx, and then minus gamma te divided by uh, me n naught, and then dn tilde by dx. So all I'm doing is solving the momentum balance equation for dv tilde by dt. So then I substitute, you know, this in there, and you can see immediately that I get dn tilde by dt squared plus, and now I'll get n naught e over me, and then I've got d by dx of d phi dx, so that's d squared phi tilde by dx squared. Uh, this last term, the n naught, a constant, so d by dx doesn't operate on it, so I can cancel that, and then I just get gamma over te over me, d squared n tilde by dx squared is equal to zero. But now our last equation which we had was Poisson's equation and what that told us was that the second derivative d squared phi by dx squared was in fact just e over epsilon naught n tilde. So the net result of, of then, then you, so then you stick that in and it's positive of course is that you get your total equation then becomes partial squared of n tilde with respect to t squared and then plus n sub e e squared over m sub e epsilon naught n tilde. We'll finally get an equation only in n tilde gamma t e over m e d squared n tilde by dx squared is equal to zero. And so this is our equation for small density perturbations in the electrons. This is the electron uh, density perturbation in a plasma. And you can see that if I now set the electron temperature to zero, then I'm going to get a harmonic oscillator problem, just like we did in Bittencourt uh, problem number 1.3. And what is this particular frequency? Well, this is, of course, the electron plasma frequency squared. And so this is just a harmonic oscillator equation which says that the electron density will oscillate at the electron plasma frequency. And what does this term represent? Well, this is just thermal motion or dispersion of those waves. Um, in view of the time today, we'll next time come back and discuss this equation more and discuss a particular formula for the electron plasma frequency, some meanings for how, what these plasma waves really do, these plasma oscillations, and how this dispersion works. And, and we'll indeed do, redo this calculation, let me say it that way. Uh, however, in shorthand form, which is the way you usually see it in plasma physics, we're doing it carefully step by step here.